Hello and welcome back everybody, this is Mystic Games. Today we're going to be using the Hooded Horse Wiki, which is, you know, the official wiki for Against the Storm. Uh, we're going to be looking at the Ash and Thicket, which is the new zone. We're going to talk about it a little bit. They don't have everything updated in here yet. But I think it is a very interesting zone and I did want to do a video on it. Um, I did a tier list kind of on all the zones like right before they announced this. So I just kind of want to put my place so far where I think it is. Um, and kind of just speak about how it's unique and such. So just so you guys can see this is the, the image of what it looks like when you play on the map. We will go back. Just want to show you guys kind of like the world map view once you're in there. So it's a forest of giant ash and trees. This land has been ra uh, ravaged by relentless industrial exploitation and heavy mining, all driven by the lore of the Thunderblight Shard. It's magically charged amber crystals used to craft cornerstones. So essentially, you're going to be mining a lot in this map. That's like the big focus here. So gain a Thunderblight, a Thunderblight Shard with every 40 veins uh that you mine up whether it be copper coal or salt um there's a lot of access to that on the map you can also receive up to three shards each requiring more resources to be mined um the thunder blight shards are used in the crafting process sorry i was drawing a blank there it's getting late uh, there's also an ancient forge in the area. This, this is where you're allowed to create the cornerstones. Um, but the negative, or the downside, I should say, is years 3, 5, and 7, you will not gain anything. Uh, so normally by year 3, you want to, you know, essentially be able to create your own cornerstone because, you know, you want to make use of the cornerstone. Um, the Thunderblight shards aren't super hard to come by. Um, the Ancient Forge, the way it's laid out before we continue, is you get a cause, and then you get an effect, and you also have a negative modifier. So, the negative modifier is not necessary, but you can add it to increase the output of either the effect or the cause. It's hard to explain without showing you, but there's essentially three drop-down menus. You get four options in each, um, at least for the first cornerstone and you kind of select what you want to do so you the one that I'm working on right now for my uh, run is every time I make 50 die or 40 or sorry 50 die or 50 flower I gain 10% harvesting speed and 10% planting speed um, that's going to be my cornerstone then I also have the Um, the negative modifier, but they were so bad that I didn't add them. So most of the negative modifiers were like a permanent debuff I was going to be getting stacking, um, and it just wasn't worth it for the bonus. So I just would rather make the extra 10 flower and die every time, um, which isn't super hard to do. Anyways, on to the final effect here. So every time you uh, mine up coal, copper, or salt, uh, it says 80 units, so 80 of them. You gain an automated rain, rain punk uh, steam cart for one of your warehouses, which is super nice. Um, it's kind of like a free cornerstone in itself because there's a cornerstone that gives you rain punk carts, so that's actually pretty helpful. Um, the Ash and Thicket has an average amount of fertile soil. I have a bunch in my map right now. I'm pretty good for food going into year, almost year three. Um, all trees can be harvested by the woodcutters. They have two charges per normal. Um, they give resin, berries, and sea marrow. Uh, both resin and sea marrow are extremely useful. And berries isn't bad. It's some source of, you know, it's another source of food that you're going to be getting a little bit to help, you know, maintain your people's hunger until you are able to uh, establish either plant, you know, like farms or plantations or gardens or, you know, uh, trappers camps, foragers camps, etc. So the resources on this map are eggs for the meat, 
um, pretty much that's your only access you can you know get the bonus resource for meat here but you don't have access to any meat or any insects without uh, the secondary bonus and therefore if you want to have a steady source of those items you have to take uh, cornerstones or perks that are going to increase or give those to you uh, for the foragers camp you have roots and veggies which is pretty nice um, for the herbalist camp you have mushrooms you're missing the other ones which is like herbs You have clay, plant fibers, and leather, which are all nice. Um, you're missing stone, but that's fine. Uh, you have plant fibers and leather, which are both solid. Leather's always nice to get because there's really... It's one of those resources that's actually, I would say, harder to obtain. Like plant fibers you can plant. Um, reeds, I, I feel like, are a little bit more accessible than leather is as well. So You also have fish. And algae, which is both nice, because uh, fish will provide you with, you know, a little bit of algae, generally at the same point. And then you have the ability to get the, you know, the clams as well through the secondary bonus there. So you have pretty much access to all of the fishing hut goods in the map. And as I said before, you have copper, coal, and salt. Um, each of them gives you access to... A secondary resource of some kind generally and pretty much that's it so the big thing to talk about was the royal mining operations which is the the cornerstone because that's the whole thing getting the thunder blight to get the cornerstones um, as of right now my like for the map is pretty high um, I highly recommend anyone who hasn't picked up the DLC, picks up the DLC. The Ashen Thicket is just a fun little zone to get. Um, you also get access to the the Strider port, which is nice, and the Frogs, which is interesting as well. So, I highly recommend that you guys grab the DLC. The Ashen Thicket is probably, you know, I would say it's above average for fun. Um, I like seeing the different cornerstone options. I think that's a really cool thing. I think the cornerstones could use slight buffs in the effects and cause direction and probably a little bit of a nerf in the sense of negative connotations when you add a negative because I don't think any of the negatives really should be a permanent debuff. They should try to do things that are like uh, if you trigger the effect it takes some food or something like minor. Uh, I feel like what it the negatives, I can't even think of what they were about. When I was reading them, I was like, man, I don't want that to happen every time. One was like hostility increase, I think, or something. Um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, and I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving for those who celebrated it. And had a good time with your family. Um, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.